everybody welcome back it's time to get started with our new chemistry unit 2 here is section 1 heat matter and changes in energy to matter notes do you have those green notes ready to go all right check out this really awesome video clip and then we're going to break it down together but please don't skip through it give it a quick watch There are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Any substance can go from one state of matter to another state of matter by changing temperature or pressure or both. These are physical changes, not chemical changes. Remember, all of these particles are moving. They have kinetic energy, which is the energy of movement. Solids have the least kinetic energy, liquids have more, and gases have the most. So to change the phase, you can alter the pressure or temperature to get the desired state of matter. To go from a solid to a liquid, you add energy to melt it. But to go from a liquid to a solid, you'd want to remove kinetic energy by decreasing the temperature, and that's freezing. Similarly, a gas can become a liquid by lowering its temperature and condensing. When a liquid's temperature increases enough, it can vaporize to become a gas. Let's take a moment here to talk about vaporization so we can clarify a few things. Under the umbrella of the term vaporization are two ways to get liquids into gases. The first type is evaporation, which occurs at the surface of a liquid that is not boiling. This is like when you spill a drop or two of water on the table and leave it there. After a while, the water is gone, but you didn't have a blowtorch on it to heat it up. The surface particles have enough energy to escape the liquid and become vapor until, eventually, the whole drop of water becomes vapor. Boiling is the rapid vaporization of liquid at the boiling point. In this case, you would either add heat or lower the external pressure on a liquid to get to the boiling point very quickly. Both methods make vapor, but boiling is much faster. Now back to the phase changes. Now solids can also skip the liquid phase and go directly to gas under the right conditions, usually low pressure or temperature. It's called sublimation. This is how we freeze dry food and why dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, makes great spooky fog at Halloween. Gas can also go directly to solid in a process called deposition, which is also sometimes called desublimation. The way I've organized the states of matter makes for a pretty chart, but doesn't do the greatest job of showing how adding energy makes a difference, so I'm going to adjust them slightly. Now these are in the order of increasing energy. Just remember that sublimation and deposition skip the liquid phase. Now I could also be more specific when I write increasing energy. I could say increasing kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of movement. Particles are always moving. Particles of a solid move less than particles of a liquid, and particles of a gas move the fastest. But not every particle is moving at the same speed. Some are moving a little slower, and some a little faster. But the average kinetic energy of a group of particles is temperature. This bell curve shows the kinetic energy for particles in a sample of matter. And the average energy of the particles is temperature, which we measure in Celsius. The temperature at which a solid becomes a liquid is the melting point. Using a chart like this, you can figure out what temperature you need to get a solid, liquid, or gas phase of the substance you're using. For example, if you're performing a lab that requires liquid oxygen, you need a temperature between the melting point and boiling point, which is where the liquids exist. So the oxygen will have to be cooled to at least negative 183 degrees Celsius, but not as cold as negative 218 degrees Celsius. A container of liquid nitrogen could help us get to those temperatures. Now suppose you want to use bromine in its vapor form. You would need to heat it past its boiling point. Gas or vapor phases are all above the boiling point temperature. Bromine is a liquid at room temperature, so it only needs a little more heat to get it to vaporize. Now let's say you found some mercury and wanted to make it solid. You would have to cool it down to at least negative 39 degrees Celsius, its melting point, to get solid mercury. At room temperature, which is around 23 degrees Celsius, everything that boils below 23 degrees is a gas, so that's neon, oxygen, and chlorine for this chart. 
Anything where 23 degrees is between the melting and boiling point is a liquid at room temperature. So that's ethanol, mercury, bromine, and water. And lastly, anything that has a melting point higher than room temperature is a solid at room temperature, like sulfur, gold, and copper. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Science Pet. All right, so we got a lot of really good information in that video. Did you catch some of the new terminology? Let's start going over it together. So let's talk about heat and matter. Matter, namely the atoms and molecules that make up matter, are affected by heat. Heat has another name. We're also going to call it thermal energy. That word thermal might sound familiar, especially in the winter time. We usually wear thermals to keep warm, thermal pajamas. So thermal energy is also called heat. This heat causes molecules to move faster and faster, making more kinetic energy. Like she said in the video, kinetic energy is just energy in motion. As kinetic energy increases, so does the thermal energy or the temperature of an object. Did you catch that? Did you see that thermal and connect kinetic energy are related? Make sure you write down how. As kinetic energy increases, so as an object or molecules an object move faster, so does the thermal energy, the heat, increase. Think about yourself. When you're running the mile, when you're running it really fast, when you're done with your mile, you're probably pretty sweaty because you've worked up heat. So as kinetic energy increases, as molecules move faster, the thermal energy or the temperature gets higher and creates heat. Hmm. Mmm, hot cocoa. Tis the season. Imagine you're holding a very hot, hot cup of cocoa, but it's too hot to drink yet. You let it sit for a few minutes. It gets cooler. Well, why does it become cooler? It's because heat always flows from hotter areas to colder areas. When two objects reach the same thermal energy, the flow of energy stops. Do you see that steam coming off of the hot cocoa? That's the heat energy flowing from a hotter area to a colder area. It's cooler outside of the hot cocoa and the energy is escaping. All forms of matter have specific temperatures at which they are in each state, kind of like we saw in the chart just in the video clip. These temperatures are part of their physical properties. This is really important to remember that matter changing state is a physical change. We are not combining different products to make a new substance. If we melt ice into water, it's still water, it's just hotter or colder water, and you can change it right back again. You can put the glass of water in the freezer and it will turn back into a solid. Matter changing state is a physical change. This is very important to remember. So let's review the states of matter. I know this is something we talked about in sixth grade, so I'm just going to touch upon it briefly, but it's really, really important to know. When matter is in a solid state, the atoms are really close together. Matter in a solid state has a definite shape and a definite volume. Think about an ice cube. It has that definite cube-like shape. And we can even measure its volume by measuring the length, the width, and the height. We have a definite volume. Water is solid when it's in the form of ice. On your notes, there is a box. It says matter in a blank state. Let's start with solid. Make sure you draw a picture of this arrangement of molecules, the matter in a solid state. Let's move on to the liquid state. In a liquid state, the atoms are more spaced out. The substance has a definite volume, so you can put it in a container and it will have a definite volume, but it does not have a definite shape. So if I dump that water on the table, it's just going to go all over the table. Or if I take that cup that is in the picture and I put it in a different size cup, it's going to take up the shape of that new cup we put it in. Think about this. Water is a liquid. The molecules are close together, but they can still move freely. 
So draw in the box how close the molecules are in the liquid. So on your green notes, draw what you see in the green box in the picture spot and make sure you include the information about liquid state. Let's talk about matter in its gas state. When matter is in its gas state, the atoms move freely. The substance has no definite shape or definite volume. Let's think about water vapor. Every time you breathe out in the winter, winter those are water molecules that are freezing as they come out of your mouth. Draw how freely the molecules are moving in the box. And last but not least, we have a very special fourth state of matter. This fourth state of matter is called plasma. It is a special case of superheated gas. This is what we see in lightning. When lightning strikes, the gas is superheated and it creates plasma. So this is a very rare and um, a state of matter, but it still exists. Let's talk about changes in state. Remember, in a solid, atoms and molecules vibrate in fixed positions. So molecules are always in motion unless you get to absolute zero, and we can talk about that later. But in solids, atoms and molecules almost always vibrate in fixed positions. But if you start adding energy, they're going to vibrate faster and faster, and they're going to shake apart and move freely, changing into a liquid. When you add even more energy, it'll make the molecules move even faster and faster, having the liquid change into a gas. Usually, a change of state is caused by adding or taking away energy in the form of heat, just like we saw in that awesome graphic in the video clip. When you add more energy, you make the molecules move faster, they want to spread apart from each other, and something melts or something evaporates. Or you could go the other way around. You can slow down the molecules, and they will come together and form a more solid shape. The temperatures at which matter changes varies from substance to substance, but they all have two fixed temperatures at which they change state. Every substance has a melting point when it goes from a solid to a liquid. Water does this at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is zero degrees Celsius. And boiling point, when a substance changes from a liquid to a gas. Water does this at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 100 degrees Celsius. However, some substances can go straight from a solid to a gas, just like you saw in that video clip. Dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, can do this. This very special change is called sublimation. So when substances go from directly from a solid to a gas, it is called sublimation. Pretty cool. Well, that about wraps up, folks. Here is your explosion video clip. Speaking of substance changes and sublimation, check out this experiment with dry ice. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs>